in this video series we are learning about aws sagemaker now all the notebooks related to these videos are in the github uh, the link provided in the description below okay so in the previous video we have looked at uh, the data preparation to train a classification model right we have prepared the data and we have uploaded it to s3 today we will use the data to train uh, inbuilt uh, xgboost model okay all right so we'll uh, in each video we might be using some new libraries so i will discuss only those new libraries uh, 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 the previously discussed one uh, will assume you are al already familiar with it right okay so the date time uh, this is just to get the timestamp so we are going to train uh, a model uh, so for that's called training job we want to give a unique stamp to the training job and we might be creating some endpoints uh, etc so for each we want to give a unique name so we will use the timestamp for that okay so the aws and sagemaker uh, related specific libraries the boto3 uh, this is to this is a python sdk for aws uh, not just a sagemaker but we can interact with uh, pretty much all the services of aws using boto3 and then we are importing the SageMaker. Uh, we are importing this training input uh, for uh, uh, for uh, inputting the training data. Now image URIs. Uh, so from this, so what SageMaker did is uh, they have containerized uh, the machine learning models. Okay, so they have created these separate uh, Docker images. Uh, for each model so what we do is for each model we have a model id or name and using that we retrieve the docker container uh, uri right that's we will use when training the model and then using this function we can get the hyperparameters for that model okay so as we have seen in the previous video this is just to suppress uh, uh, the information uh, which is below warning level uh, otherwise we will see found credentials in this aws config file for uh, uh, all the aws commands right that's what we are doing okay and then the region uh, because we already know we can uh, we can either uh, use the input the region uh, as a string directly or we can access from the sagemaker session also what region we are in okay and this is important so if we run this code directly on either sagemaker notebooks or sagemaker studio so using the sagemaker uh, we get execution role we can directly get the execution role okay but if you are running the notebooks from local uh, this command won't work right so get execution role command will not work we will have to give we will have to explicitly give the SageMaker role ARN. So this is a role I have created in my AWS account, which has the permissions to run uh, the SageMaker uh, modules. Okay, so I got the role ARN and I have uh, put it in my environmental variables. So from the environmental variables, we are getting the role ARN. Okay, all right. Now we have the bucket and prefix. Uh, this is where we uploaded the data last time and uh, let's see so within this bucket and prefix we have three folders batch transform data and model so we have uploaded the train and test data uh, to this data folder right the last time so these are those two files right all right so that's all we need so we need just these two files to train a model Uh, all right so our training file test file uh, it's just uh, not much happening here all we are doing is uh, I'm just printing oh sorry I want to talk about this line okay uh, this is just to show you uh, we are stitching these three strings strings together the bucket name the prefix and the file okay so that would give us this s3 uh, sagemaker course iris uh, this is the bucket name this is the prefix 
and this is where the data is right so we have created uh, these two strings uh, for training and testing files and then uh, we use this training input function from SageMaker to input our uh, training data file okay so this training data file we are simply passing it to uh, this function so that it creates uh, this object uh, that SageMaker uh, training input object now we use this train input object while training the model okay all right and then uh, when we train the model it's going to create some model artifacts basically the weights of the model etc in the form of a zip file so here we are specifying where do we want to write those uh, uh, that output to right so the model output it's going to be the SageMaker course iris uh, with and then uh, the model so the model artifacts are going to be stored on uh, at this location all right and then uh, so we want to train xgboost model and uh, it the latest version of the model right so using this image uris retrieve we provide the model name the region and the model version that will give us this docker container uri so this is the uh, uh, uri so as i as i was saying SageMaker, uh, they did uh, they have installed uh, all these libraries uh, related to different machine learning models uh, into different uh, Docker containers and then they have registered them uh, on their this elastic container registry. Okay, so here what we have is uh, the container ID, the Docker, elastic container registry, the region name, uh, the AWS thing and then we will have the model name and the model version okay that's how it looks like so for any model whether it is image classification object detection or text uh, classification or any other model we are going to use this functionality to get the uh, docker uri right by providing uh, the model name and the version okay all right then uh, so training it's going to be a job so we we want to give give the job a name so here we are simply saying iris hyphen xg boost hyphen right now this job name must be unique that's why we have imported the data time library date time library so we are going to add append the current date time to this uh, string to make it unique all right now so using this estimator class uh, we are going to uh, get the estimator this is not really xgb model this is actually an estimator okay now to the estimator we will provide uh, the model uh, the image the docker image and then the role okay the base job name and instance count so uh, these are these are really standard right i mean this is related to the model these two are standard and then now instance count uh, only one right here we are giving one now there are some models which can be trained in parallel but xgboost model uh, it can be trained it cannot be parallelized the code cannot be parallelized because the reason is we will be training one tree at a time right so after it i mean i'm assuming you know how the xgboost model works so we'll train a model and then uh, for those records uh, which are misclassified uh, they get some boost i mean uh, then in the next model we'll tell the model hey these are important records so give more preference to classifying them correctly right we repeat this process so here we are training these uh, decision trees or the boosted trees uh, one after the other right that's why the xg boost model cannot be paralyzed and we can train it only on one instance whereas if you are training a random forest model where all the decision trees those are independent of each other right so in that case we can use multiple instances to speed up the training process okay 
and then the instance type uh, again depending on our data set and how fast we want the training uh, we can choose the instance type uh, if we are training any computer vision uh, related uh, models we might be using uh, a GPU okay and this is a normal CPU one all right then output path where do we want to save the model artifacts and then this is a standard variable uh, this volume size so this instance will come with uh, 5 GB so basically this EBS elastic block storage so to this instance uh, the AWS will attach this external disk of size 5 GB right so depending on again our model and data set sizes etc we might want to increase the, this number all right and then we want to set some hyperparameters. so here we got the estimator right now to the estimator we can set some hyperparameters. okay so the number of classes uh, this is the iris data set so we have three classes uh, the maximum depth this is the depth of the tree so we are saying uh, 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 the depth of the tree uh, should be 5 otherwise what will happen is uh, the the depth of the tree keep grows until each uh, each record is accurately classified right so that would be overfitting so we want to prune the tree at some level and then the number of rounds uh, this is uh, the number of boosted trees okay uh, here the objective function uh, now for all the machine learning models there is an object function we either want to in most cases we want to minimize and sometimes we want to maximize uh, a function as well so here we are choosing this softmax function uh, because it's a multi-class classification uh, we can uh, we are choosing this multi uh, softmax function okay all right then uh, the base job name uh, uh, we chose this X, uh, iris uh, hyphen xg boost so here where we are getting the current uh, timestamp and we are appending it to make the job name unique okay all right and finally here we are uh, going to fit the model so uh, with the estimator we fit the model and we simply give uh, the training input the validation input now the job name now weight is equal to true what it does is until this model training is uh, done uh, we will wait here so we cannot execute uh, the other cells without uh, this cell or the model training is completely uh, uh, completely executed okay all right so it provides a lots of information uh, starting with the job name so here is saying okay I am starting a training job uh, the preparing the instance so this means uh, what it is doing is it's picking up one of the EC2 instances with these parameters uh, the size storage uh, the processing speed etc and then it will install this uh, XG boost model so it's preparing that uh, instance and downloading our input data the train and uh, test data um, and then finally it start the training process so there will be lots of information um, depending on the model if it's a deep learning model it will show the epochs etc uh, and the most important one would be this validation metric uh, error we might want to monitor this metric okay uh, all this information is written to AWS uh, CloudWatch logs as well we will see in a, another video how to access those logs and how to um, how to extract uh, the very specific information we wanted from for example from this file we want to check how the validation error uh, is reducing uh, with the number of steps right over a time so we can extract such specific information from the aws cloud logs as well now the model training is successful otherwise you will see some error messages and at the end it's saying okay the uh, i have generated the model and i am uploading the model uh, back to s3 okay so it's up uploaded the model back to the s3 that's the output part we have mentioned the training job completed 
and here it shows the number of training seconds and the billable seconds okay all right so we have written the output to this model folder right now let's look at our training uh, model folder uh, our training job name our training job name is yep so it's this one uh, 935 yeah okay so these are the previous versions of the model i have trained now this is the model we have just trained so in this uh, path on s3 a new folder is created okay new folder is created and uh, this folder will have the model artifacts now if we look within that folder uh, this is how the structure looks like and this output folder will have uh, uh, the zip file uh, containing uh, the model weights right so that we can use uh, this uh, zip file to deploy the model and make uh, inferences okay i will quickly summarize uh, from the beginning uh, all right so the important bits uh, at this path we have our training and test data and then uh, we are just doing some string manipulation uh, so that we can get the complete path using the bucket name the prefix and the actual file name right and then we have simply uh, used this S3 three path to prepare this uh, uh, input object, this training input object, right? And then uh, using the model name and the version we want to train, we got the Docker image, okay? And then we are accessing the estimator uh, by providing the docker image uh, how many instances we want to train the model on uh, the instance type and finally where do we want to write the output to uh, the remaining options uh, those are standard those don't change much okay and we can set some hyperparameters as well so the number of classes three the maximum depth of the tree five and we want to have 10 boosted trees and this is the objective function we want to minimize and then we create a unique string uh, for the job name and we submit the job so when we do this uh, on the instance we have chosen here uh, SageMaker will prepare uh, the, uh, the libraries uh, to train the model it will download the training data and validation data and train the model and it provides lots of information during the training and once the training is done it upload the model artifacts back to our s3 uh, um, uh, storage okay and this is how the output folder look like and it has these three folders and within which uh, the output folder again uh, contains uh, the model artifacts and in the next video we will see how we can use uh, these model artifacts to deploy the model as an endpoint as well as how we do the batch inference that's all for today thank you very much